Okay, so I'm deep into the puppet monster craze right now. Uh, so I went back to my critters collection. Them critters hammered me into the ground, took my rifle. And I watched Critters 3, starring Leonardo DiCaprio in his film debut. So I just recently reviewed Critters 2, uh, so I had to go back and watch Critters 3. Now I had heard through other YouTube reviewers and just general word of mouth that Critters 3 wasn't nearly as good as Critters 1 or 2. And I have to say, yeah, I kind of agree with all that. Uh, Critters kind of went a little downhill. That Critter Ball rolled down that hill. Critters 3 is still not a bad movie though. Uh, yes, of course, it is notable for being Leonardo DiCaprio's first movie, it, but he's not very notable in the role. You know, sorry to say, I mean, he gives a performance just like any other child actor would give, and he's fine. He doesn't shine exactly in the role. He's just, he's just a kid, and he plays a kid, and he says some lines and does what an actor should do. But yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio's first movie is not enough to make this that interesting. It's a bit of a letdown, and I'll explain why. Got any of those critters over there? Well, first of all, I mean, in the last Critters movie, we had hundreds of critters, like enough to make that giant ball and like roll over that dude and eat him and stuff. The flaming critter ball that rolls out of the warehouse. And Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, Critters 2. Go see Critters 2. Or at least see that before you see this one. Because here in Critters 3, there's only like, I don't know, maximum five critters. I think there actually might have been six. I wasn't really keeping count because it's kind of hard to tell. It's been a week since I saw Critters 3 and I've forgotten a lot of it. So forgive me if I don't remember all the details. But it's okay. I mean, you know, it still has critters in it. Critters are awesome. You know, little furry floppy munchy balls of fur with huge teeth that go around and eat people and eat stuff and wreck shit and just get it cause chaos you know and they still don't really talk it's like if they have any communications with each other it's going to be in subtitles so they have their own crite language i mean you know what a crite is right we're here with the crites we want the crites oh really it's a critter come on you know like keep up here people you gotta figure you're dealing with the dumbest, orneriest critter on God's green earth. It's still cool, it's still critters, uh, you know, but when it comes to the franchise, this was like a, a down part. The majority of this movie takes place in one apartment building, uh, so you get like critters rolling down the hallway, uh, you get critters in the laundry room, critters in the kitchen, um, critters in the attic, like, you know, critters in all this confined space like you know i really liked the 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 fact in critters 2 that it was like the whole town the whole town was like overrun with critters and critters were you know they're chewing on the electrical wires and they're like biting car tires and stuff and you know they invade the local burger factory here and they storm the restaurant eat up all the food and there's way more for critters to actually do than there is in this like one apartment complex so in this apartment complex. Uh, it's kind of like a low rent housing kind of thing. Evil landlord whose son or rather stepson happens to be Leonardo DiCaprio. Slumlord guy is trying to teach DiCaprio how to be a proper slumlord, I guess. And Leo's like, no, no, it feels wrong m making all these people have to go out on the street and like you know, bilking them out of all this money that they could make from selling their apartment or whatever and moving on and blah 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 and you're just an evil jerk and you don't care if these people live or die and then the critters show up and fuck all that shit up. Um, there's like a superintendent that lives in the building and he's like the sleaziest motherfucker ever. And the first 30 seconds you see of this guy, you know that he's going to be the first one eaten by critters. And he is. Uh, yeah, the critters get into the building. They they travel on the undercarriage of like our protagonist's family's 
vehicle, uh, their broken ass camper that for whatever reason has no brakes. But yeah, the critter eggs attach them onto the bottom. Um, conveniently, right around the time when Charlie the Bounty Hunter shows up. Charlie being the, the old drunk from the first movie. Well, he's not old, but he's a drunk. The end of that movie went out into space and became a bounty hunter with the other guys and returns in the second movie. Uh, now he's back in the third movie. He's the only recurring character uh, from the previous two movies. He's meant to be like comic sidekick or whatever. But really, I think the comic relief in the Critters movies really comes from the Critters themselves. But even them, they don't really... They don't get to do that much in this movie. They don't form a critter ball. They don't grow to giant proportions. They do launch their poisonous quills. And a couple of people get knocked out. You know, and they get a critter dart in their neck or whatever. And, you know, and the characters are okay. It's like this ensemble cast of all these people that live in this run-down apartment building. Our main girl, actually, in this movie. Can't think of her character's name or her actual name. She has a crush on Leonardo. Yeah, uh, it's pretty dumb. Stereotypical curlers in the hair, divorced fat lady or whatever that lives in the building and she's like comic relief as well. There's too much comic relief in this movie if you ask me. Like first of all, the superintendent guy, he's like such a dirtbag that it's like funny and he's such an idiot that it's funny. Uh, Then there's like an old couple who conveniently know a bunch of stuff about critters i think or they remember the stuff that happened in uh, grover's bend back in uh, critters one and two anyway charlie the bounty hunter shows up and helps with the critter invasion of this apartment building oh yeah and they uh the critters uh they managed to eat uh, the evil slumlord guy or kill him anyway and Leonardo doesn't seem too broken up about this because the guy was obviously evil. He was his stepfather. So there's no real emotional connection there. But by the end of the movie, it's like, it's astonishing how little anybody gives a shit that, like, people died in this building, but uh, critters are all dead. Yay! You're the hero, Leo. Well, actually, he really isn't. He's one of the heroes uh, because, you know, him and the uh, female lead, the teenage girl, uh, they managed to get out of there unscathed and then the little brother as well and there's the one woman uh, I think she works for the phone company or something and she's got like tool belt she's like uh, the superintendent guys like making fun of her in the beginning of the movie and he's basically I guess calling her a lesbian or something I don't know uh, whatever it's really uncomfortable and really weird but for a good part of the movie you'd think she was like freaking Ripley, you know, Sigourney Weaver, like, fighting off critters instead of aliens. But then she gets, like, tangled in the phone wires and stuff, and it's like a visual gag, and it's like a kind of a slapstick thing where she's, like, swinging on the end of this, like, telephone line and trying to get to the telephone booth and make an emergency call, and she doesn't have the proper change or some shit. And Anyway, it's really dumb, and it's like, it's a joke you could only pull off in the 80s, because who the fuck even knows what a phone booth is anymore? Anyway, yeah, they beat the critters, critters blow up, people hit them with bats and shoot them and burn them and blow them up, and the critters start the building on fire for some reason, they wreck the shit out of somebody's kitchen, and, but you know what, in this one, you don't get the critter chaos that you got in Critters 2. Like, remember in Critters 2, they go to the Hungry Heifer? And they're at the salad bar, and they're eating all the shit at the salad bar, and they go in the back, and they're eating all the meat and everything, and one critter falls in the deep fryer and shit, and it's like chaos. They just take over this restaurant and eat everything. Um, Here, they go to somebody's kitchen. One critter eats a can of beans and farts. Uh, Another one drinks dish soap and burps bubbles. And then they flop around and they, they maybe throw a little bit of food around and that's it. Like, that's your critter action, really. Other than, like, shooting darts and rolling down the hallway and biting people. The cranks are up to something. Yeah, you got a lot more critter action in Critters 2. So, Critters 3, Critters 3 was a slide. It was a slow slide. Well, maybe not that slow. Like, I gave Critters 2 a B plus. This one, I think... I gotta give it a C plus. 
plus. So it's somewhere between like Ghoulies 2 and Critters 1. You know, like it's the worst of the Critters movies that I've seen so far. I've seen three of them, but almost as good as the worst of the Ghoulies franchise. So anyway, yeah, I don't know, C++, because it was fun to watch, and it's a dumb, enjoyable, floppy, furry, rubber, chompy, puppet monster movie. Yes, I'm aware I said poppet instead of puppet, but I'm not editing that. Well, I gotta say it was the least of the franchise so far, the worst one, but not a terrible movie. I mean, it was entertaining, it was stupid. I was expecting it to be stupid, but it just went along and it was like, oh, you know, was, everything was telegraphed. You saw every joke and every visual gag and every, every critter's kill and every critter's thing that was gonna happen. Uh, you could see it coming a mile away. But anyway, this episode of Puppet Monster Theater uh, ends with Critters 3, uh, which I gave a C plus plus. Okay, so the next video might be another rubber, furry, chompy puppet monster movie. Most likely not. We're gonna, I'm going to try and work some other normal stuff in there. Well, by normal, you know what I'm talking about by normal, right? Weird-ass movies that you probably might never have heard of or bother to watch. Anyway, until such time, y'all have a good one out there. Watch out for critters. And have an excellent day.